There has arguably been no story in history that has been warped by Disney more than Pocahontas's. Granted, it wasn't entirely their fault. Many of the accounts that Disney used for their storybook retelling of Pocahontas's life came from stories and records that relied a lot on the reports told and written about by John Smith himself. But thanks to historians, it's become easier to access the real story. And because of that, it's been clear that John Smith lied. A lot. Almost his entire recounting of his time in America was falsified and misconstrued throughout history. And it turns out that the real Pocahontas wasn't involved with the colonizers by choice. And because of that, her life was filled with a lot of pain, most of which was outright omitted from John Smith's stories. Now, among the things that Disney chose to change about Pocahontas based on John Smith's stories actually starts with her name, but then goes deep. As it turns out, basically their entire relationship was made up. And thanks to historians like those who work for or were interviewed by the Smithsonian for an amazing article that they wrote about the real life Pocahontas, there will be a link for the article in the description below in case you'd like to check it out for yourself. But one of the first things that the article pointed out is that, unlike what most people believe, at birth Pocahontas's name was actually Matoaka, which translates to the flower between two streams. In reality, it was her mother who was named Pocahontas, and Matoaka was only given that nickname by her father, Wahun Senaka. He was what was known as the Paramount Chief, and following his wife's death, he would often refer to his daughter by her mother's name, Pocahontas, because she constantly reminded him of his lost love who died during childbirth. The chief's connection to the deceased mother of his child is really interesting because as Paramount Chief, Wahun Senaka had multiple women in his life with multiple children. But according to Mataponi's history, he only ever really loved Pocahontas, which is why he used Matoaka's nickname as a reminder of her. Just a heads up, from this point forward, whenever the name Pocahontas is used, it is now in reference to Matoaka, who was the focal point of the Disney film anyway. That being said, the chief's love for Pocahontas's mother should have been the love story that was in Pocahontas. Not that weird one between the titular character in John Smith that never even happened. That's right, the entire romance aspect of the plot was fabricated based on the way that John Smith first described his interactions with the Powhatan tribe. And also because at that time, you couldn't really have a Disney movie without a love story being involved. In reality though, it was discovered that the interactions between John Smith and Pocahontas were very limited. This is mainly because she was still just a child by the time he showed up in the so-called New World in 1607. At that time, according to historical reports, Pocahontas was only around 10 years old when John Smith would have been around the age of 27 or 28. And because of how protective the Powhatan people were with their children, especially those that belonged to the Paramount Chief like Pocahontas, there would have been very little to no interactions with the settlers. So the entire idea that John Smith was close with Pocahontas was something that he came up with on his own, as a storyteller rather than what actually happened. Now, something that many people believe to be true because it came directly out of John Smith's mouth years after his time in Jamestown that made waves was that Pocahontas had supposedly saved his life. But once again, that turned out to be total nonsense. According to historical reports, John Smith was feared by members of the Powhatan tribe because he had built a reputation for sneaking into native camps and holding chiefs and leaders at gunpoint in exchange for goods. So it's definitely safe to say that the tribe likely wanted him dead, much like they wanted many of the other invaders killed. But when the time came and they had the chance to kill John, his life was indeed spared, only not because Pocahontas stepped in to save him. As history explains, the likelihood of the pair interacting is very minimal. And instead, what saved John Smith's life after a group of natives captured him was the fact that they both shared a common enemy. The Spanish had been terrorizing the various tribes for more than a century by that point, and the English were more than happy to align themselves with the Powhatan tribe if it meant teaming up against a common enemy. This is why, according to historical reports, John Smith was actually granted the title of Wera Once by the Paramount Chief, which roughly translates to the Chief of the Colonists. And this is where John's side of the story started to not make sense, and it was made even clearer that he was lying about any relationship he claimed to have with Pocahontas. John Smith claimed that Pocahontas saved his life during what he described as a four-day process that turned him into a werewolf. But according to both oral and written reports by the Mataponi, the Powhatan people wouldn't have had a reason to kill John Smith if they were bestowing that honor onto him. Therefore, there wouldn't have been a reason for Pocahontas to save him. The story just didn't add up, and despite John Smith's version of what happened between Jamestown and Pocahontas's tribe being the most well-known version of the story thanks to Disney, it could not have been further from the truth. You see, Pocahontas was supposedly married twice in real life, unlike in Disney's version of her story. And in this case, she only really had a say in one of her marriages. While Disney's version of the story saw Pocahontas falling in love with John Rolfe, that's not really what happened. Historical reports and oral accounts claim that when Pocahontas came of age, she was married to a young warrior named Kokoam, who was the younger brother of Chief Japaza. Pocahontas started a family with the warrior as the two supposedly had a child by the time she turned 15. And it was around that time that Pocahontas' 
tribe began to hear rumors about the colonists' plans to kidnap her. And sadly, it wasn't that hard for them. An English captain named Samuel Argall found out what village she was staying in and showed up demanding that her husband hand her over to him, otherwise the entire village would be destroyed. Pocahontas was reluctantly handed over to the English, though it was under the guise that it would only be temporary. And little did the poor Powhatan girl know that after he gave her up, the colonists murdered her husband, Cocoam. None of this was previously written about in any of John Smith's accounts at the time. And when it came to light, many people across Europe were disgusted by the mistreatment that Pocahontas and her people faced. Sadly, this wasn't the end of it. After being kidnapped by the colonists, historians of the Mataponi tribe have come to suspect that the young girl was subjected to horrible things. Eventually, though, she would end up being forced to marry one of the very people who kidnapped her. And not out of romantic reasons, either. You see, by that point, Jamestown was under the care of Captain Argall and a man named John Rolfe, who wished to be successful in the tobacco industry. However, he couldn't figure out how to grow and harvest it properly, despite the fact that he knew it was possible since the natives had always been successful at it. Rolfe tried to inquire about the secrets of tobacco's harvesting from the Powhatan tribe, but that was a closely guarded secret among the natives. So in order to be considered close enough to the tribe to learn their secrets, the English forced Pocahontas to marry John Rolfe. And sadly, the ordeal ended up working out for the colonist. And though John Smith's books and stories never mention this part, Pocahontas was not happy with her marriage. She was forced to have children with Rolfe, and when his tobacco farming proved to be a massive success, the stories about John and his native wife began to spread around England like wildfire. And that resulted in even further mistreatment of Pocahontas, as she ended up being forced to travel overseas to England to meet with the king and other royals who looked at her as if she was something less than human. They acted as if she was there as some sort of symbol for peace between the native tribes and the colonists, but in reality, she was just on display for all of them to look at and judge. Interestingly enough, it was also reported that while she was being shown around as if she was a trophy of sorts rather than an actual human being, it's reported that she did actually meet John Smith, but their reunion wasn't a happy one that those who go by Disney's retelling of history would expect. Instead, it's said that Pocahontas publicly expressed her outrage towards John Smith because of his mistreatment of her people and of the title of Werewants that her tribe bestowed upon him. She, like many of the Powhatan people, believed that Smith betrayed them, which was why their alliance wasn't long-lasting in the end. Pocahontas' time in England ended up being the last of her time on Earth, with many believing that those close to her likely had her poisoned, only further expressing that her life was no fairy tale. According to historical reports, when the time came for Pocahontas to return to Virginia in 1617, she was in good health. Even while she was on the ship preparing for the journey back to America. She was supposedly healthy, and that's why it confused everyone that she was with when she passed away suddenly after eating her dinner with her husband. The tribal members who were with her were reported as being sold as servants or to act as attractions in carnivals around England. It was truly horrible and something that makes you wish the world was more like a Disney movie. But what are your thoughts on all of this, especially after hearing the truth about what happened after John Smith founded Jamestown? Let us know your thoughts on the real story about Pocahontas in the comments down below.